Women Taking the Lead, episode 161. Just go for it. Don't worry about what other people think. Just you have a dream and go for it. Hello, my name is Jody Flynn and welcome to Women Taking the Lead, where we are all about creating blasts of inspiration to help you overcome self-doubt so you can lead with confidence, integrity, and a sense of humor. Head over to womentakingthelead.com to join the community and get the resources to support you on your leadership journey. Now, your future awaits, so let's get started. Every child wants to be the hero of their own story. At JulesCustomBooks.com, your child plays the central role in every book, bringing joy and delight when they hear their name and those of their family and friends. Visit JulesCustomBooks.com to make your child the star of the show. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'm here with Dr. Michelle Cologne, who is the author of Body Wisdom, 10 Weeks to Transformation So You Can Get and Feel Healthy Again. She is also a physician, entrepreneur, yoga instructor, and a motivational speaker offering workshops and online courses based on her book. She hopes to inspire women to live happier, healthier lives that honor their own bodies, wants, and desires. She is a holistic podiatrist in Southern California and lives with her daughter in a suburb east of Los Angeles, California, where she hikes and practices yoga. Dr. Michelle, that is just a little intro for everyone. So tell us more about you and your own humble beginnings. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy to be here, Jody. Well, um, as you stated, I'm a physician. I've been a physician here in Los Angeles for 19 years, believe it or not. Um, I also have a startup, a shoe company called 34 Minutes, and I have my um, coaching business as well. So it keeps me pretty busy. But um, my humble beginnings, well, I grew up in a military family, so I was an army brat. And um, so we moved around a lot. We didn't really, you know, settle down until I was in the middle of my elementary school. And my dad was gone a lot. He was gone for like two years at a time. He was in Germany. He was all these other places. And my mom was kind of left to hold down the fort. Um, And I have two sisters. So it was my mom and three little girls. And I think I learned a lot from her, um, good and bad, (laughs) which I'm sure everyone does learn from their parents. But, you know, she, she was working two jobs and trying to like, just keep, us above water. And it was really, it was really tough at times because we were getting the reduced lunches and we didn't have any money set aside for college. So it was kind of known that, you know, if you're going to go out there and make something of yourself, you're going to have to pretty much do it on your own. So I always knew that. And I knew I wanted to be a doctor from a really early age. So I just, as soon as I could start driving, I started working and saving as much money as I could. And I ended up having to work all through college to put myself to through school. And when I got to medical school, it was just almost impossible to work because the studies were so much. So I ended up taking out a lot of student loans for medical school. So that just kind of added to, you know, the stuff that I learned from my mom about struggling. And, and I always had that kind of mentality that it was going to be a struggle. So I think that was, that was one of the things that, you know, it kind of pushed me, but at the same time, it held me back a little. I don't know if that makes sense to you. Yeah, no, I think th- I'm with you because I think when you expect the struggle, you can work through it. But I think sometimes we create struggle mm-hmm. <laughs> when we expect it. Yeah, yeah. And it, and it took me a while to, you know, see that and, and kind of get through that. Mm. Oh my goodness. And you know, Dr. Michelle, I have to say, like, I can tell from your bio and, and what you're telling me now, like you've had a lot of training, not just, you know, becoming a doctor, but you also continue like you, you strike me as a lifelong learner, um, from what I'm reading in your bio and, and what you're telling me and you've built up quite a body of work. So what I'm sensing from you is there's a lot of learning that goes on and then transmuting that learning into educating others and helping others. And, you know, I can definitely sense, you know, from the, those early college years of having to take on a lot of debt and just knowing that it was going to be struggle, you've come to a whole new place too. And I can hear a lot of confidence in your voice. I, you know, the work that you're doing now, I know you're incredibly passionate about because you live it and you're all about it. But I always love to hear, start with the stories of that playing small moment that that we can all relate to that because there's always times in our lives where we just don't realize how much we're capable of because we are capable of 
a lot, but we don't always believe it or live up to it. So if you could take us back to a time when you were playing small, you may not have been aware of it at the time. It may have been in retrospect, but share with us that story and the lessons you've learned. Yeah. I mean, I think I really thought about this for a while and and I think there were a lot of things that came up for me, but I think the one that came up as my worst plain small moment or my biggest plain small moment was back in school and I was really bullied a lot. And it started, I would say at the end of elementary and all the way through middle school. And it, I really let it get to me. Um, I really let it affect my self-esteem and I let it stop me from doing things that I really loved, like volunteering for student government and um, public speaking and doing a lot of the things that really gave me a lot of joy. I just really let it shut me down. And so I think that, um, you know, one of the things that I learned from that was how to speak up for myself, um, how to not really worry about what other people think and to go for what I want, regardless of what I think other people are going to think about it. So like when I started my startup, my, my shoe business, um, in the beginning, I was kind of holding back a little because I was having those same thoughts, like during those bullying days, like, what are people going to think? What are my colleagues going to think? Are people going to think that this is a crazy idea? You know, and it held me back a little. And then I had to really work through that and think, you know, what? I'm doing this for a reason. I'm doing this to help women feel more comfortable in their shoes. And so when you go with it from, you know, the standpoint that you're doing things for a positive reason, it doesn't really matter what other people think. Yeah. And you really live that. I can really, you know, it's always, you know, people say our mess is our message, Yeah, you know, that we take from our life experiences. And for you, wow, that it, it goes back. And it does for me as well. It started in grammar school um, on my mission. Uh, and for you, it's like really sending the message to women like, don't worry about what other people are saying and how they're judging you. Like you really have to be in tune with yourself and what you want, what you want to go for. Uh, Cause you're right. And this keeps coming up. There's always going to be critics. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be doubters, but we can't live our lives based on that because if we do, we're going to end up living a half life and a life we're not happy with. And so you know, part of living full out and being happy in life is just allowing those people to say what they're going to say and move on. Yeah, exactly. But it takes practice. It does. (laughs) (laughs) And And it takes support. It, you know, like aligning with women like you who can give that reassurance you know, yeah. that it doesn't matter. And those fears come up like over and over again in our lives. Like as we take on a new business or a new, or our business grows, you know, those little fears will pop back up into our minds, but it's, that's all it is, is a fear. It's not really reality. So as long as we can see that happening and not get caught up in it, we can get out of it quickly. Mm -hmm. Separating that you're absolutely right. Being aware that like those fears are natural you know, mm-hmm. kind of feeling the fear and doing it anyway, but we're not always taught to do that. You know, sometimes, and especially when we're little girls, we're told, well, if you're afraid, don't do it. Yeah. And, <laughs> and knowing that they always come up and also knowing that all of us go through it. Like I was just talking to this, um, this other entrepreneur the other day, who's, you know, has a seven figure business. And even she goes through it when she creates a new product or launches a new Mm -hmm. program or, or grows in her business in some way. She told me that those same fears come up for her too. So knowing that we're not alone, that we, all of us as women go through it is also like a comforting thought. It is. So (laughs) when it happens, you're just like, Oh, there it is. I love that. Now, Michelle, share with us a time in your journey when you had a wake up call. It could have been like an aha moment, like a light bulb going off. Or for some people, it's a slow awakening. But there's always a moment when we're ready to take action on this this wake up. So share with us that moment and the steps you took that led to your success. So this one goes back to what we were talking about in the beginning about feeling that like things would always be a struggle. Um, So my wake up call was really when I paid off all of my student loans. And this, this feeling came over to me like, Oh my gosh, I can do it. Like I can actually get out of debt and not always have to struggle. And so when that happened, it just, it was like such, um, such a feeling that I was able to accomplish such a big goal 
that it was a, I was able to take other steps, like start paying off credit cards and start paying off other, other things. When at one point it looked like none of this is ever going to happen. I'm just going to always be working to pay off these bills. I'm always going to be struggling. And then once I paid off that one, it was like, Oh my gosh, I don't have to be in debt forever. I can actually get through this and, you know, enjoy my, my success rather than always having that thought that it's a struggle. Mm hmm. Yeah, I forget who has the quote, but it always seems impossible until it's done. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it felt. Yeah. And, and you you make a great point where you just have to start doing it and take the steps because I don't know about your experience, but I also went through paying off a lot of debt, student loans, credit cards, car, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And what I found was is the same. I had the same experience. Once one was paid off, it built momentum. And as time went by, I was I was in jobs that were making more money. You know, and so I was able to put more money towards the debt. And before I knew it, it was paid off when I thought it was going to be like 10 to 15 years before I paid off the debt. I had it paid off in five. Yeah, that's such a great feeling. I can't even, I mean, it's like, it was one of my big life goals was to have my student loans paid off. And then when it happened, it was like, wow, like I actually <laughs> did one of my big life goals. It was like this huge moment for me. I think I celebrated yeah, it, for like the whole year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I believe it. And no one can take it away from you either. Like you did it and you know you can do it again. Right. Perfect. And Michelle, th this is a great segue because what I always want the, the women who are listening to this podcast to get is there's no one way to lead. You know, it's really about finding and get, being in tune with your strengths, your personality, your experience, and coming from that place to find the leadership style that works best for you. So if you wouldn't mind, describe for us your leadership style. Well, the way I describe it is leading by example, um, because I know I, everyone has heard that phrase, walk the talk. And, you know, in terms of me with like my health, I've had health issues and I've had struggles with it. And even though I'm a physician, um, sometimes the answers aren't easy. So I've had to, you know, find the way that's going to work for me. And then once I found that, I was able to start teaching others. And so as long as I just walk the talk with every step of my business or everything that I'm doing, I think that that's the best way that I can lead. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And what I want to get into now is like the current reality. We've talked a little bit about your past and where you've come from. And now I want to hear a couple of things that are going on for you. So to start, share with us one thing you're working on right now that you're really excited about. Well, I'm really excited about my new podcast. It just launched and it's called Body Wisdom with Dr. Michelle. And it's really all about teaching women how to heal themselves. So not just relying on going to the doctors. And I know a lot of women that are, have struggled with health issues kind of got the runaround. And that's what happened with me when I was um, sick. And so I really just want to show women how they can heal themselves with different things like food or exercise or sleep. And so I interview different experts on some of those different topics and it's been really fun and I'm really excited about it. And, um, anyone can find it on my website, drmichelle.com. Awesome. And I think it's so important for women to understand their bodies more. And first and foremost, partly because not as much research is done for women as it is for men. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so a lot of it is intuitive and you have to learn how to be an advocate for yourself in the doctor's office. I do believe things are changing, but I've also had my own experiences where, you know, I went to the doctors presented with an issue and, you know, kind of the attitude was like, really? really, you know, and it was not pleasant, but the better, you know, your own body, the more confidence you'll have in speaking up and advocating for yourself when you do have to get some medical attention for yourself. Yeah. I love that. All right. And on the flip side, Michelle, what is the biggest leadership or business challenge you're faced with right now? For me, it really is growing my team. So as as my business grows, my team has to grow. And I've had a small team for a long time. And so it's really been a challenge for me to really find like, what's the magic number of people that I need to help me um, 
you know, in all my different businesses and what's the best way to use everyone to the best of their ability. So I think that's, that's been it. And that's just another growth, um, growth spurt or growing pain as my, uh, one of my friends likes to call it. <laughs> in business. Yeah. Right. It does. Yeah, it definitely takes some time to find the right fit and the right dynamic. That's well, one to identify exactly what it is you need and you want to delegate and get off your plate. And then finding the person who can one do those tasks and two fits the culture, you know, because you have to hire somebody who believes in your mission you know, and where you're going. Otherwise, you know, I don't know uh, if you've had this experience before hiring somebody who's just doing it to do the work. It's not that much fun. Like I'd much, I'd much rather work with somebody who's like, I love what you're doing. Great. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Especially when you're working with, like in my practice, you know, I'm working with a lot of patients and a lot, a lot of them are elderly and, and, Mm -hmm. and a lot of them are really sick and we really need people that really care. So for, for that part of my team, um, you know, it's really important that we get the right type of people. But in every part of your business, you need the right type of people that loves to do accounting when you're doing your accounting work and balancing your books. So, yeah, finding the right fit is really crucial. Mm-hmm. And Dr. Michelle, one thing um, the women who listen to this podcast often ask me about is, you know, with the women I interview, they're doing big things. They're out in the world and, you know, they are achieving levels of success that sometimes some of the listeners have not yet achieved. And what has revealed itself is a lot of the women who become very successful have an incredible support system around them. So for the benefit of the listeners, so they can kind of get an idea of like, what kind of people do I want to have around me and, and who benefits me most? Could you tell us about the people you have around you that make it possible for you to sustain and expand your current level of success? Well, yeah, I have my office staff, of course, and my VAs, which we already mentioned a little bit, but I also have my business coach and I've been with him for about three years and he's really helped me um, achieve new levels every time we we build on it and we just keep building. And so that's been really helpful for me. Um, Also being in mastermind groups, I'm in two groups right now. Um, One meets once a month and the other one meets once a week. And Um, these are not paid mastermind groups. These are just, you know, groups of like-minded entrepreneurs. We decided we needed to have some accountability and we get together. We talk about our, our different business challenges. Sometimes we talk about our personal life because personal life comes up when you're, you know, Mm -hmm. building a business. Um, and then most of my friends are women entrepreneurs. It's just who my tribe is. So they, you know, we, we make sure that we make time to go out and to have fun too. We're not just always talking about business. And then of course (laughs) there's uh, my family. So that would be everybody. Awesome. Sounds like a well-rounded support system, some paid and some absolutely not paid, which is a benefit as well, especially for somebody who's in a startup mode to recognize you don't have to pay for everything. Sometimes if you can just find like-minded people, people who are as ambitious as you are. And sometimes if you can find people who are just a little bit more ambitious than you are, that's great motivation for getting everything done. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of free information out there for people. So if, if they need to find stuff like that, it's definitely out there. Mm -hmm. All right, Michelle, now I'm going to do a quick leadership roundup. So tell us, what is one practice you have that helps to make you a better leader? Deep listening, just really developing that skill of being a deep listener. I'm sure you have to practice that all the time being a doctor. Yeah. Because most of it I imagine is inquiry. Yes. Yes. I love that. And what is one book that you would recommend to a woman to help her develop her leadership? One of my favorites is called Tribes by Seth Godin. And it really talks about creating a movement to be a leader by creating a movement and having um, your tribe follow you. Perfect. And what advice would you give your younger self? It always goes back to that same thing. Just go for it. Don't worry about what other people think. You have a dream and go for it. That's becoming a trend right now. This seems to be the period of like people needing to hear, stop listening to other people doubt you. Yes. (laughs) Do it. (laughs) And Dr. Michelle, share with us a success quote or a mantra and why it has meaning for you. 
So this would actually come from that book, Tribes, by Seth Godin. And it, he says, the secret of leadership is simple. Do what you believe in. Paint a picture of the future. Go there and people will follow. So that's partly what I my advice was to my younger self, to just go for it. Be yourself. Do what you love and you people will follow you. Awesome. And lastly, what is the best way for this community to connect with you? That would be my website, and that's drmichelle.com. And I have pretty much all my social media links are on that website as well. So that would be easiest. Awesome. So, and for those listening, I know oftentimes you're on the run or you're in the car heading to a meeting or to the job. So, you know, you can find all the links and resources shared in this episode at womentakingthelead.com. And if you put Michelle's name in the search bar and it's Michelle spelled with one L, her show notes page will pop right up and you'll be able to find her website and all of her, uh, resources that she shared. And Dr. Michelle, thank you so much for taking the time to inspire and enlighten us. We are all better for having met you. Oh, thank you, Jody. Your website tells a story about your business. At Zebra Love Web Solutions, Millie and her team are going to make sure your website tells the story you want your customers to hear. Connect with Millie at zebralovewebsolutions.com to create the impression you want to make. Thank you for joining me on Women Taking the Lead. Are you ready to take the lead in your own life but need some support? Head over to womentakingthelead.com forward slash contact to introduce yourself. And to strengthen you on your leadership journey, I'd like to send you off with a quote from Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Again, thank you for joining with me and here's to your success.